And a survey conducted by the Center for Democratic Development, CDD Ghana, and UNDP has revealed that vigilante activities are growing at an alarming rate in parts of the country, despite the introduction of the Vigilantism and Related Offences Act. The report indicated that all of the vigilante activities and associated groups are related to the two major political parties, the New Patriotic Party and the National Democratic Congress, NDC. The the report again revealed that women were beginning to play key roles in such vigilante activities. According to the report, uh, major causes of the electoral violence and vigilantism were the winner-takes-all policies, unemployment and poverty, as well as politicization of chieftaincy dispute. The report further stated that uh, seeming mistrust for state institutions such as the Electoral Commission and the police are motivating the formation of vigilante groups in the country. The Vigilantism on uh, Related Offences Act of 2019, which bans acts of vigilantism in the country, has since been passed by Parliament. According to the law, a person who directly or indirectly instigates or solicits the activity of a vigilante uh, facilitates or encourages vigilantism or uh, conceals a vigilante to avoid lawful arrests, commits an offence and is liable on conviction to a term of imprisonment of not less than 10 years and not more than 15 years. Right, so uh, the survey was conducted by Democratic uh, Center for Democratic Development, CDD, and UNDP. It has revealed that vigilante activities are growing at an alarming rate in parts of the country despite the introduction of the Vigilantism and Related Offenses Act. The report has indicated that all of the vigilante activities and uh, associated groups are related to the two major political parties, the New Patriotic Party and the National Democratic Congress, NDC. The report again revealed that women were beginning to play key roles in uh, such vigilante activities. According to the report, uh, major causes of the electoral violence and vigilantism were the winner takes all uh, politics, unemployment, as well as uh, politicization of chieftaincy. All right, so we're joined in the studio by Mildred Adraku, a research analyst at the Tamale uh, Centre uh, Office of CDD Ghana. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us this afternoon. So uh, tell us about the uh, report findings, which are a bit worrying, especially I'm concerned that your findings suggest that a lot more women are getting involved in vigilantism. This should be worrying for everybody. Sure. Good afternoon. Mm. Uh, good afternoon to you and your viewers. And thanks for the opportunity. Yes, uh, what you said about the fact that the involvement of women in uh, issues of uh, election-related violence and also political vigilantism activities is very uh, worrying. The f uh, we all know that women, traditionally the role women play mm. when it comes to violence has to do with nursing of the wounds of the men that have been shot and also acting as peace ambassadors. I see. But from our research, we've realized that women now serve as inform informants for some of these uh, groups where they attend the, uh, the rallies and the campaigns of their opponents or the other side where they don't belong. And then they identified those who were at the rally and then relate those information to uh, their p political parties the, those people who attend those rallies are considered enemies or to belong to 
the other side. I see. Let's look at the trends. I know that we've been talking about vigilantism for a while and the uh, incidents at Ayawaso uh, West Wagon during the by-election brought this up in a very nasty way which uh, came to the nation's attention. But your re 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 research, uh, tell me uh, how far you have been looking at is this uh, a few years back or your research captures only a period recently? Yes, uh, our research was done recently. We actually had the research uh, from August to September 2019 of this year. As you said, a lot has actually happened. Even though as a country we've had successful elections, but they were with some issues. So we had this research specifically between August and September this year. Mm, and then we actually, we, the research is a qualitative study. Qualitative meaning, I mean, let's get yes, a clarity so for those qualitative who meaning don't that, understand uh, the systems. We adopted non-probability sampling methods where we use purposive sampling mm. in identifying our study areas. Mm. So, in our so you consciously targeted study areas for exactly. the purpose of this research. Exactly. So nothing you did was random. No, please. Mm. So we, uh, we took into consideration some criteria. We looked at whether the community in question has ever had uh, an um, whether the community has ever recorded an, an election-related violence, exactly, okay. or whether there have been an issue of vigilantism in that particular community. We also took into consideration whether the, the community is a border community. Mm -hmm. We also took into consideration whether there have been a competitive election okay. in that particular community. So based on that criteria, we, we came out with five communities, mm -hmm. and we zoned these communities into three zones. Uh, not the northern zone, which was represented by Yendi and Bogatanga, and also the middle zone, which was represented by Sankore and uh, Asawase. Interesting. And then for the uh, for the southern zone, it was represented by Aflao. So, so uh, in total, how many sample sites were there? Because you've mentioned that there were, uh, did you say three and uh, five, and then you had three uh, zones. Within these, uh, how many numbers uh, popped up? I mean, this will ultimately lead okay. us to you mentioning the names of these groups, right? Yeah. So, because it's a, a qualitative study, mm. so we had focus group discussion, as I indicated earlier. So, in all, we had 36 focus group discussions in these uh, five communities cumulatively. Mm. And then uh, for each of the focus group discussion, we had between eight to 15 people, maximum of 15 sitting in each of these uh, focus group discussions. And also we actually, the, we had a category of people who form each of the focus group discussions. So the category, we, we spoke to assembly men, we spoke to uh, political party executives, we spoke to uh, professional based groups, we spoke to religious leaders and traditional authority, we spoke to uh, women based groups, we spoke to people who were identified as being involved in activities of vigilantism mm. or political vigilantism. So the report also indicated that uh, the incidence of vigilantism has been as a result of mistrust for institutions, institutions like the Electoral Commission. Tell us uh, what went into uh, the uh, sampling for, for this and how you arrived at that conclusion. I don't know whether it's a relevant question. Please come again. I'm saying that you, the, the report did indicate that vigilantism is on the rise because of mistrust for state institutions, including the Electoral Commission. And I'm asking, what were you looking for? Were you going out to ask specific questions before this came up? Yes, so we wanted to find out why people form these vigilante groups. Mm -hmm. And also we wanted to also find out why people join these vigilante groups. So it was based on the questions that we posed. Mm -hmm concerning why these vigilante groups are formed in the first place. That's how come the issue of mistrust for state institutions, in this case, the Ghana Police Service and the EC came into the picture. Mm, and uh, how worrying is this? I mean, especially looking at the fact that these state institutions are actually the real actors to ensure that we have violent free elections. The uh, Electoral Commission is, is supposed to be the 
conductor is supposed to be conducting these elections while the police service ensures that uh, violence don't, does not happen and miscreants who will use the electoral system to cause trouble are eliminated. Now here we are, I mean, people mistrust these institutions, but yet they are the ones to be helping us conduct successful elections. Where do we draw the line? I think uh, it's, it's, it's a little worrying, as you have indicated, the fact that if the, if the people perceive that the institution in question is not independent, then it will be difficult for them to accept the outcome of elections from these uh, institutions. Uh, what they actually indicated was the fact that with the Electoral Commission, they said uh, the Electoral Commission does not do due diligence in the recruitment of their temporal staff. So uh, because of that, they end up uh, recruiting people who are members, known members of political parties. And then when issues of uh, misunderstanding happens at the polling station, these people are unable to resolve the issues because of their political affiliation or their perceived political affiliation. So I think what moving on what the uh, EC has to do is to pay more attention when they are recruiting some of these people. Some and I think people. with that, we are good. So uh, pretty shortly, we'll be going onto the telephone lines to Salama Mena, our man uh, who is uh, at the CDD. Uh, he will be uh, joining us. He's at the Peace Council, I beg your pardon, on the CDD report. He'll be joining us uh, pretty shortly uh, to get us some update of what's, uh, what he's bringing in from there. But uh, we still have Mildred here. So uh, I am concerned, like many Ghanaians, this trend. But uh, we don't have to also forget that this revelation from your research comes on the back of the fact that we have the uh, Vigilante and Other Offences Act in, in place already.